And should I go ahead and expand? There we go. I'll go ahead and expand the slides. Some of the slides have a lot of uh, small uh, detail graphics on it, so maybe expanding them will be a little bit easier to see some of those things. So I'd like to you know, join Jessica in welcoming everyone and thanking you for attending the webinar today on building an estimation center of excellence. We'll be covering a lot of material today over the next um, hour or so. We'll start by discussing you know, why would you want to bother implementing an estimation center of excellence or ECOE in the first place. Um, Next, we'll discuss how do you do it from, you know, the preliminary groundwork that needs to be laid down to justify the investment. So that's a maturity assessment, a business case, and a charter, to how do you define the processes that will be used and how it will be integrated into the existing enterprise project and portfolio infrastructure, and then how do you deploy it and make it better over time. And then finally, we'll wrap up with the benefits that others have realized by implementing uh, the solutions we'll be talking about today. Um, so yeah, we, we, we might first ask ourselves, why, why bother setting up something like an estimation COE? And if you think about it, software is everywhere today. It's in our devices. In fact, it's what make our devices work. It's in our smartphones. It's in our cars, it's in our appliances. We use it to run our businesses more effectively from you know, human resources to finance to you know, inventory control to you know, resource management and capacity planning, uh, even to how we manage our employee benefits and, and healthcare. Uh, and the IT organization is always being asked to deliver more capability with fixed or reduced resources. And they're expected to deliver it that, or deliver that capability faster, you know, to meet fierce competition and meet demanding customer expectations. Uh, and if we don't succeed, it affects our organization's reputation and potentially our survival in the marketplace. So if successfully delivering software capabilities and value is so important, what's been our track record historically? So I put some statistics up here, fairly recent statistics, and, and we've got them broken out in terms of project success rates by projects that used a more waterfall type methodology versus projects that used a, more of an agile type of a methodology. And you can see that improvement as we move from waterfall to agile in terms of you know, more of the projects uh, being uh, identified as successful. But we still have over half the projects that would be listed as, you know, challenged or, you know, failed. So if, if software is so important, why do we find it so difficult to predict and manage to a successful outcome? Well, in our research at QSM, we tend to find that project failure is it's not an execution problem, but it's a problem with negotiating and setting appropriate scope, schedule, and cost expectations. In short, it's a failure to make fact-based decisions. So let's take a minute and see how those project success rates would play in other non-software endeavors. So this is something our PR folks put together, and they always like to spin a little humor into the subject. But if you think about our early explorers, like you know Christopher Columbus, for example, and how they would have fared getting their expeditions funded with less than a 50% success rate. And just as important, where are they going to get the crews to sign on to those voyages with uh, such dismal chances of you know, getting to the new world or you know, let alone returning to their families? So thankfully today, we've got proven analytical methods to support making successful business decisions. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So we see setting up a estimation center of excellence as sort of a, a six-step process. We start off with well, you know, a very preliminary estimation maturity assessment. So let's take a look at what the organization is doing today in a number of different categories. Uh, and that helps us hone you know, where do we need to you know, build on things they're currently doing and where are things that we need to stand capabilities up from scratch. Um, we need to document uh, a business case, which is basically you know, why do we want to do this? What's the investment they're going to make? What are the benefits that we're likely to derive? And, uh, and what's the return that we're likely to get? And that all gets documented in a project charter. Um, next, we turn our attention to the estimation process definition and build out. 
So we're looking for what are the different types of software development methodologies that we've got to support in the enterprise, um, you know, how we're going to implement our estimation tooling and how we're going to configure that for the different types of, of projects and, and development methodologies that we've got going on, and how are we going to then integrate the estimation processes in with our existing infrastructure, uh, enterprise systems, and, and are we going to integrate those into those systems in terms of you know process, strategy, and standards, but also in terms of the enterprise tooling that we might have in place today with project and portfolio management systems, requirements management, you know, task, test tools, tracking and reporting, and so on. And then how are we going to deploy and roll it out? Um, so generally we find there's uh, ways that you do that are more, that are more successful than others. It revolves around starting with a pilot and getting a few quick wins, and then how do we uh, communicate and educate the rest of the organization about what we're trying to do to get everybody on board. And then obviously we've got to support um, some continuous feedback as we deploy and we learn and we do. How do we make it better so that it uh, over time better supports the organization and the mission that it's designed for? So that's, that's the, the six-step process that we'll be talking about today. So the first area or the first place that we generally start when we're embarking on this journey is we'll, we'll do a maturity assessment um, with our client organization. And there's really five areas of estimation practice that we're looking at. We're looking at the business area. And that's basically all about does the organization, you know, use the output of our estimation processes to support making commitments and, and business decisions. Um, you know, are they using estimation methods that support industry best practices? Um, once projects are chartered and we're, we're, we're starting to develop the capabilities, are we tracking those progress pro projects with a comprehensive set of metrics and using that to assess project health and you know, doing forecast to completion when needed when things change? And then finally, in the measurement area, you know, is there a program in place to measure and improve the effectiveness of our measurement processes over time so we make them better? So these are kind of the five areas of practice that we look at in that maturity assessment. So this is what the uh, what our maturity scale looks like. Um, you're probably familiar with the, the five levels of maturity from initial to optimizing from other process domains like the CMMI. Um, most organizations start at the initial immature state where estimation is ad hoc and not used to make meaningful business decisions. In the next level, estimates are you know, somewhat managed, but not with great consistency. By the defined stage, we have standardized estimation processes in place, but they're not being coupled with an organization-wide improvement program. And by the time we get to the higher levels of maturity, we're incorporating industry best practices like using historical data and implementing statistical process control concepts to support our business decisions and leveraging metrics-based feedback loops to improve the overall process. These are the questions that we ask in those different, those five different um, areas of practice. So you'll notice there's only one question um, in the in the business area: Is estimation used to make commitments? Uh, as I said earlier, we're in the business of helping companies make fact-based decisions, business decisions, and an organization organization can have the best estimation processes in the world, but if they're not using them to make business decisions, what good are they? So we place a lot of weight on that very first, very first question, are you using the estimation, the output of the estimation to make your commitments and support business decisions? Uh, the next level down in the estimation best practices area, here we're trying to determine if they're using a top-down scope and complexity-based method to uh, estimate their projects. Um, it's, it's so critically important, I'm going to make this point many times today, that uh, scope is one of the key drivers to how long a project's going to take to develop that scope and how much 